It certainly appears as if low dose electron beam irradiation of beef trim will suitably generate product that people will be willing to eat um, and, and product that will be free from risks uh, as we know it today associated with the presence, the possible presence of these ferrotoxigenic E. coli. The Beef Research School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by the Beef Cattle Research Council. Um, probably of all the technologies that are used to process food, uh, irradiation is, is the most extensively studied and has been for over a hundred years. Basically what it does is, is use uh, uh, energy from um, electromagnetic waves that are, that are generated from uh, radioactive isotopes or um, high-speed electrons uh, which are accelerated by a machine um, and what they do, both these forms of energy cause uh, ions to be formed from atoms. Um, and uh, as a result, these changes um, cause chemical changes in the DNA, the chromosomes of, um, of tissue, of animals, um, plants, bacteria, and fungi, uh, and, and these are lethal effects. Um, in terms of Toxicity and nutritional issues. Um, the World Health Organization, in two different studies, 1996 and again in 1999, uh, concluded that if food were irradiated at, at levels um, as, high, as high as 60 kilogray, there were no uh, significant nutritional concerns and no significant toxicological concerns in, in food that is treated in that fashion. Well, we were, we were interested in, in using uh, really low dose uh, application rates. Um, presently in the U.S., uh, up to seven kilogray are approved for use in, in frozen meat and poultry. Um, the intent was to reduce that uh, absorbed energy level so that uh, we would reduce the possibility for organoleptic or sensory changes to occur in, in the products. Um, so we used uh, one kilogray irradiation of meat pieces that were inoculated with uh, E. coli 015787 and 22 other uh, verotoxigenic strains of E. coli, uh, including the big six of concern to the, um, the USDA, and, and evaluated um, the uh, lethal effects that such treatment might have on, on the E. coli um, when it had been added to these meat pieces. And what we found was that the, um, the VTEC whether they were 0157H7 uh, or, or the others, were equally sensitive to the irradiation. And so if there were as many as 10,000 bacteria per square centimeter on the meat, treatment at one kilogray would kill them all. So, um, when we did the sensory uh, analysis on uh, meat that had been uh, made into to hamburger, and, and that hamburger contained uh, um, anywhere from 10 to 30 percent fat, um, and it also contained anywhere from zero to 100 percent irradiated meat. And what we found was that regardless of fat content, and regardless of irradiated meat content, i.e. all the way up to 100% irradiated 
meat in the hamburgers, in, in the beef patties, um, we couldn't see significant effects of irradiation on things like juiciness, color, um, or texture. And we ran uh, you know, a formal sensory panel here at the University of Manitoba to address those issues. So we were quite pleased that uh, uh, from a statistical perspective, uh, our panelists couldn't really tell um, whether or not this meat had uh, received ir irradiation treatment prior to cooking. We were enthusiastic uh, in addition because of the bacteriological results as well. So it certainly appears as if low dose electron beam irradiation of beef trim will suitably generate product that people will be willing to eat um, and, and product that will be free from risks uh, as we know it today associated with the presence, the possible presence of these barotoxigenic E. coli.